Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMblog's coverage of the KubeCon Cloud Native Con event taking place in Chicago this year. And today we're joined by Brett Settle, the Chief Product Officer at ThreadX. Brett, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. So for the folks who are watching this who may not be familiar with ThreadX, could you just give us a quick overview of the company? Yeah, we've been around for about 10 years now. We're a managed API and application protection platform. So what that means is we can provide botnet protection, DDoS protection, but more importantly, security protection for APIs and applications. And that includes both the observability side as well as the active blocking side. I think our kind of claim to fame, honestly, has been we're able to provide very good protection, but do it in a way that is not quite as complex or burdensome for our customers, partially because we have our Manage services, it's always there to help, but also there's just a lot of automation and we have a unique way of really correlating all of the information that we see back to unique attackers. And by doing that, that really simplifies the information. You get very good correlated views of exactly who's attacking, what they're attacking, what they're targeting, what techniques they're using. And then it makes the confidence in the platform extremely high when you move it into a blocking mode. So lots more to it, but that's the short version at least. So as we get ready for KubeCon, um, how does your company and your products fit within the Kubernetes and cloud native ecosystem? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, you know, for most cloud workloads that are out there, they're almost all running off of APIs, as you guys know. And all cloud environments have inbound traffic coming from the outside. Then there's a lot of execution that goes on within the cloud itself. And then obviously integration with other third parties, both inbound and outbound. So I think, you know, one of the key things that we've got is a couple different deployment models. One version is a reverse proxy, very easy to set it at the edge and really provide protection for any inbound HTTP traffic uh, that's coming through, as well as monitoring kind of uh, the responses that go out. What we're really excited about, though, is uh, obviously we also have a new deployment model, which is uh, a runtime deployment model or something that's based on eBPF and gives us the ability to have a simple sidecar uh, deployment that's deployed uh, within a Kubernetes cluster at the node level. And by deploying it at that level, it both greatly increases kind of the capabilities of the platform, but also simplifies the deployment for any cloud environment uh, that, that you operate in. Now, for attendees of the uh, KubeCon event, if you could maybe talk about some of the specific types of problems that you're solving for them and maybe uh, also put that in kind of terms of uh, specific use cases. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what you see, there's a lot of cloud native kind of application uh, protection platforms that are out there. And I think a lot of those are based on more endpoint style of technologies. And furthermore, a lot of those solutions, they tend to lean pretty far left in terms of, you know, making sure that you're doing all the things pre-production wise that you should be doing. It's a different problem space, I think, when you get into the runtime side. And while a lot of those uh, players have some runtime capabilities, what we're finding is their true knowledge of what the type of attacks that are happening at the application or the API level, they're just different. And I think that's where we're able to kind of bring the expertise that we've built protecting at the edge for a long, long time, but now deploy that same level of expertise even deeper in the stack. And so first and foremost, you're kind of getting that extra subject matter expertise deeper in the stack for various inbound transactions. Beyond that, though, by being deployed, you know, really at the kernel level and having the visibility, not only to just an inbound and outbound transaction, but now all the process flows, you know, all the network layer um, interactions that are going on, it's much better for three primary use cases. What I would say is zero days, where there's no pattern that's been defined for a traditional kind of firewall uh, solution that's out there. Now that you're seeing the actual execution going on below, you have a lot more information to be able to identify you know, that exploitation or to identify that malicious uh, behavior. East-West traffic, I think most solutions that are deployed at the edge, they're really geared around protecting specific assets or specific applications and API um, collections. In this case, you know, because you're seeing everything that's going in and out of the node or in and out of the cluster, you get much better uh, visibility to the east-west traffic and can not only identify it as suspicious, but you can also correlate what you're seeing as whether it was truly malicious um, or not. 
And then I think, uh, you know, really the third case is the traditional runtime case. So this is where you're talking about malware. This is where you're talking about rootkits. This is where you're talking about, you know, other things that traditionally you're not going to see on the inbound HTTP requests necessarily, but it's something that's only operating during the execution level. And so you have that visibility. It could even be data exfiltration and things of that nature. But the way we're looking at this, at least for ThreadX, is it's kind of an outside-in protection model. So obviously you want that umbrella protection at the edge if you can, and that's where the reverse proxy fits well. And then you have really the deep inspection to say for anything else that's kind of coming in, maybe from the side or maybe things that just haven't been identified like zero days, you now have a solution that can combine that set of information uh, into a holistic platform. Now at KubeCon this year, there's gonna be 250 plus uh, sponsors that are gonna be there at the show. Obviously, everybody has their uh, their product and their niche. What makes you guys stand out in the market? And, you know, what's that unique differentiator that makes you stand out? No, I think it's great. I think um, there's a couple of different things. And, you know, I'll talk about one in particular in a minute that's really the stickiest part. But from a technology perspective, most of what we do is really built on taking a look at all the different transactions, but really correlating them back to unique attackers. And so one of the hard things about, you know, down at the level that you're at when you're talking about containers and microservices as you are low enough now that you don't always know where did this transaction start. So having kind of the, the combined capabilities that we have allows us really to get that network correlation going on so that once we've identified a malicious attacker, we can now block it all the way at, at the outside edge. And that then gives you the ability to kind of keep that traffic out and keep it out of the out of your system and not clutter your system with a lot of the noise that's out there. Most people are afraid to initiate blocking in the first place, just simply because it is scary, right? But I think we've gener uh, we've been able to kind of prove that you know we do some request level or process level blocking, but most of our blocking is done at a risk based um, algorithm, and that allows us to defer the blocking until we have enough information to make good clean blocks. You don't have to block with our solution. You can leave it in an observability mode like most other solutions. But the feedback we got from our customers and the prospects and the CISOs that we you know, work with is that it's just an enormous amount of information. And so you're wanting to have something that kind of keeps you getting from getting overloaded with all of the noise and really allows you to quickly understand you know, where are the areas where we can put either virtual patching in place or blocking in place to narrow down the focus so that we can really focus in on those higher value activities we need to. Now, with everything I've just talked about there, ultimately, we've got a managed service that really leverages the platform for most of our customers. And what I said you know, there in the beginning was, this is probably the most sticky part for us because almost all the customers we work with, they don't have enough resources to go around and cover all of the bases. They certainly don't want to be paged in the middle of the night or on weekends. And so I think you know, having this as a managed solution for our customers gives them a lot more flexibility to have a second set of eyes folks who are actually seeing it across multiple customers perspective, uh, potentially, but certainly getting them their nights and weekends back, helping them you know, kind of handle some of the more advanced attacks uh, that are out there and, and providing good clarity in terms of threat intelligence on what we're seeing there. So those are the, you know, three of the things that I think stand out the most for us. Now, Brian uh, alluded to the scope and size of the number of sponsors that are gonna be at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. And, uh, you know, usually it's this is one of those shows where people are showcasing something new, uh, things that they've recently launched. Is your company making any announcements at KubeCon or, or have you announced anything new lately uh, that you can talk about ahead of the show? Uh, you know, to a certain degree, um, there'll be more news that will obviously follow this. But for us, this runtime application and API protection is a fairly new product for us. Um, but also just the amount of capability that not only we're able to provide in terms of visibility, but even, you know, our ability now to kind of expand that to, as I said before, correlate the information back to unique attackers and really help you with that threat intel profile is a new capability that's part of the solution that's coming out, along with much, much better visibility to just the overall uh, deployment topology. What we found very early on with this is just that, you know, while we're limiting some of the noise that's out there, um, there still is so much noise. So the UI, the look and the feel, everything has really been tuned to say, yeah, there may be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of events, 
but how do we filter this information down for you very quickly? Get your eyes on what are the highest risk? What are the biggest trends that we're seeing in the overall uh, application? And how do we make this the most uh, efficient for the folks to be able to utilize it? And then how do we allow you to filter it to specific clusters, nodes, groups, things that you want to uh, zero in on uh, for particular business purposes as well? So a lot of that is just the advancements we've made primarily based on a lot of feedback we're getting from our beta customers and from our uh, GA customers as we're kind of rolling this out into the wild here. Right. And, you know, attendees uh, look forward to KubeCon every year and to hear from some of the thought leaders about the big picture and some of the futures uh, of the industry. What are some of the themes or trends that uh, that you guys are looking forward to in 2024? Well, you know, first and foremost, it just continues to be, we're seeing, you know, the, the always ever present continued cloud adoption, but we're seeing it really across the heterogeneous environments. Um, so we're seeing more and more of our customers really taking advantage of kind of having multiple cloud environments that they can deploy in, giving them flexibility for both cost purposes, regionality purposes, other things along those that nature. But with that comes additional complexities in terms of how each of those uh, operations kind of integrate and uh, operate. So from that perspective, you know, it's, it's good from our perspective because it's something that our solution does extremely well, which is correlates everything back from a cloud perspective, giving you a lot of visibility across that. From an attack perspective, obviously, you know, some of this is just based on the type of research that we do, but we used to see, you know, the typical OWASP top 10 and, and you know, more advanced attacks at the application layer. But as I think everyone in the world knows right now, APIs are just on fire. And just the percentages of API attacks that we're seeing, the size of the companies that are being attacked, and then when you just look at the overall number of API collections and the propagation thereof, of APIs, it's just going through the roof. And it's kind of created this uh, bonanza or feeding frenzy, I think, for attackers to really focus in and leverage APIs as kind of that first foray for them to really dig into and launch the attacks and and you know often find payloads that are far beyond what they may have expected in the beginning. So that's kind of the biggest thing we're seeing is just the explosion of attacks across the API landscape and what that's doing to your overall threat landscape as well so now i know ThreadX is going to have uh some great demos uh at their booth at kubecon but for the folks who are watching this video right now is there anything that you can demo or show off uh for this video for those folks yeah no i'd love to show you guys just uh, a quick teaser of you know the capabilities and kind of show you each of the aspects. There's four different views that we tend to zero in on. So let me get that fired up and uh, we'll run through it very quickly. All right, um, well, great. Let me uh, let me spin you through kind of the, the basics. So this is obviously a, a demo environment, one that we've used uh, for various analyst presentations and other trade shows. But, you know, there's multiple different views that we provide through the, the platform itself. It starts with just the general attack visibility that you're gonna see. There's a botnet console that really helps you understand what we're looking at from uh, certain attacks that may be aggregated under multiple APIs and sometimes hundreds of thousands of APIs. Uh, runtime protection, that's really the new level of visibility that we're providing visibility to the cloud workloads in addition to just the standard attack information. And then we've got the API catalog itself. And again, one of the biggest challenges for most customers is simply how many APIs do I actually have? How many endpoints do I have? Are they actually being utilized the way they're supposed to be? You know, what kind of attacks are you seeing? What kind of vulnerabilities are you seeing? So I'll start at the top and I'll just quickly say it's a multi-tenant solution. Uh, some of our customers are, you know, large MSSPs or large companies where they have multiple uh, different geographies and business units. So you have the ability to pick a channel, pick a, a specific um, uh, tenant that you want to see. You can group the sites, you can look at individual sites. The one thing about our platform is we store at least 90 days worth of data, 90 days from the last time we saw a particular attacker doing any kind of suspicious behavior. So you have the ability to forensically go back, look at, you know, as, as small as 30 minutes all the way up to 30 or 90 days or pick absolute time ranges. Um, in this particular example, I'm just showing you that there are a handful of sites that we're using uh, in this demo environment. And for those sites, you'll note that, hey, we've got a number of different attackers doing different types of attacks against different components or different applications. And as you'll notice, quick visibility to just any of the overall risk ratings. 
by default, um, you know, the solution will block anything over 70 on a hundred point scale. Um, so you'll see there's quite a few blocks that have got taken off, uh, place in this particular example, but we're tracking everything. So there may be very low um, score entities on here and very low transactions that, hey, maybe it's just the beginning of an attack, but we want to continue to track that information and kind of watch how they target your assets, what type of techniques are they using, and ultimately we'll either block at the request level or at the uh, entity level itself. For any one of these, you'll note that it's a pirate name. It's just an initial identifier because we may uh, determine there are multiple IPs, and this is part of a botnet attack. You'll note that there's different attack states. So in some cases, it's just basic recon, but if there's enough of it, then we're automatically going to you know, reach a threshold where the risk will climb high enough to block because it's not normal traffic. In other cases, you see a lot of exploitation attempts. You'll see kind of the history in terms of this one. It went through a, a list of blocks being released to the block after 30 minutes, and then ultimately it moves to a blacklist if you continue to be abusive. Uh, descriptions and certainly the classifications. And then for each of these, you know, easy ability for you to kind of drill into the details, watch the history um, as it's occurred for this particular entity. You'll be able to see where they started, what particular domain or asset were they hitting, what path were they hitting. So in this case, these are APIs and API endpoints. You'll note that, you know, initial activity, we snap the agent information, TLS fingerprints, path parameters, and then you've got the details as to what occurred that ultimately added up in terms of overall uh, cumulative information to a block. And then we released, we go through the same process, keep the score the same, watch what they do next. And then ultimately as they get more aggressive or as they continue to be belligerent, they'll ultimately get blocked uh, entirely. So, you know, this is the first of the views, the dashboard view. It's just a quick reference for folks to understand Hey, you know, who is attacking the application? And also, you know, when you need to do the due diligence, confirm there are no false positives, you've got all the information at your fingertips. Similarly, there's a top target, which basically says, hey, these are each of the um, components that are being attacked. And then for each of these, you'll note how many unique attackers, how many matched events, how many blocked events. Are we seeing other suspicious behavior like 500s or other things? And then for each of these, you'll be able to drill in, see specific paths that are being targeted, and then ultimately kind of the similar visibility, which tells you the type of attacks that you're seeing against those particular targets. This uh, top targets is particularly useful just because you can build the alerts to really let you know, you know, typically when there's an attack going on, you're gonna see a spike in something. It's gonna be a spike in the number of attackers, a spike in the number of matched events or block requests. And that's a key indicator that this is an area that you wanna really drill into dig into, identify, are there specific vulnerabilities that may have been introduced or something new in the code? Maybe it's a new attack type that's going on. Um, botnet is just, as I said before, in certain cases, there's going to be uh, a set of information that was identified. On the attack dashboard, you'll see that hey, there are certain things that are key indicators that the, these multiple IPs and multiple uh, entities actually have a lot of similarities. And so the botnet console is our ability to pull those all together, see the details behind each one of those particular attackers, look for the commonalities in terms of the different types of attacks, and then craft uh, a, a response if one's not already capable out there to kind of roll with that botnet attack. Because the one thing about botnets is they don't just launch a generic attack that you have an easy signature for. They continue to go through various permutations and changes, trying to avoid the detection. And uh, you know, it's the one biggest thing we see in the botanist industry is, if you don't have the ability to be flexible and move quickly, then you pretty much get uh, a pattern defined for you and sold on the dark network, and they kind of slip right past the botnet solution. API catalog. I'll go quickly here, but um, for the API catalog, if I blow it back out to the seven days, you kind of get a better visibility too. These are all the APIs that have been discovered. Uh, for uh, these uh, various sites that are under our protection. You'll note that we've got the sites themselves and we kind of start at the top level for each of the sites, giving you visibility then to what we're seeing. Are there any major increases? And then for each of these, how can we drill into the specific endpoints below, identify what we're seeing in terms of additional behavior. And then for each of the endpoints, you know, quick reference details, and then more specifically, what are all the different types of attacks and potential vulnerabilities that we're seeing for each of these components. So it's a you know pretty standard catalog kind of drill down approach. And again, what we're trying to do is 
make sure that we're giving you the visibility to potentially thousands and thousands of endpoints and APIs, but quickly getting your eyes on where we've seen the greatest attack types. And then lastly, I'll just hit the runtime component here. This is really, especially for the KubeCon crowd here, this is gonna be you know, the deployment that's been done um, within that Kubernetes environment, whether it's uh, you know, GKE, whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, or whether it's standard case, um, this can be deployed, as I said, node level as a sidecar. And then what it's doing is leveraging the eBPF to really identify how many different applications are running in this particular environment. And then for each of those applications, any of the suspicious events that we're picking up. Quick reference across the top to give you the type of information that we're seeing. Um, but more importantly, it's the ability now to take a look and say, okay, for this Apache application, let's take a look at the different type of commands or let's look at specific classifications that we're picking up. There's info disclosure here. There's a certain set of rules potentially that we're picking up here as well and or high versus low risk activity. And again, what we're doing is we're trying to filter you down as, as much as we can to get you specific eyes on the type of events that are occurring that kind of match that. For each of the events, you're going to have, you know, the process graph, which will include, you know, where did this start? What was kind of the sequence that it went through? Sometimes we'll have the sister processes and, and events that we saw and picked up at the same time. Anything else that was suspicious, you'll have the ability then to click there. And then for each one, it's the trigger conditions that we saw. All the parent IDs, the timestamps, command line, and more importantly, just the environment variables, what we saw, what was going on for this particular uh, event. And then, as I said before, there's always the ability, if there are multiple events, to be able to kind of see the patterns and see other areas that may be uh, under attack at the same time as well. So I know that was really quick, but I also know I only had a few minutes to kind of get through it all. But you know, it's, it's a fully featured platform uh, information. As I said, a lot of this is also being utilized and managed by our managed services uh, team as well. And again, you know, the key here is to take a mountain of information, make sure you're getting as much visibility as you can to exactly what we're seeing that's both suspicious, what we're seeing that's malicious. And then, you know, we have the ability to be able to implement the rules to actually engage in active blocking, which is very different than a lot of the solutions that are out there. And again, that blocking can be virtual patches to certain vulnerabilities we've identified, or it can be just, hey, there's a, you know, all the known things that just should never occur in my application environment. We can get that blocked, but we'll have the audit trail. We'll have all the information that we need behind it to stand up and give you the confidence that it's doing what it should be doing and it's not doing the things that it shouldn't be doing. So, and with that, I'll uh, kind of wrap up at least for now this demo, but encourage folks to uh, definitely visit us at the booth. We can go into much more detail and really address any questions this may have provoked in that conversation. Well, thanks for that great demo. Um, where can people that aren't gonna be at KubeCon, where can they go to find out more information about your company and some of the things you talked about today? Yeah, I mean, the easiest place is always going to be threatx.com. So it's threat with an X, all one word, dot com. Uh, you'll find everything that I've talked about, at least at a high level on the website. And then, you know, we obviously have folks that can reach out. What I'll say, guys, is our uh, our ability to get this installed and do a, a proof of concept or at least, you know, get through the demo. It's a super easy deployment. It's something that can happen very quickly. And, you know, there's not a lot of tuning that goes on. Most of this is using a lot of ML and a lot of, fuzzy logic behind the scenes to really, you know, automate as much as you can. The minute you get this thing installed, you start seeing the same results that I showed in the demo. So always something I encourage customers to take, take a, take a, an active uh, look at. Well, we look forward to seeing you at KubeCon and uh, thank you again for being part of our, our coverage of KubeCon. Awesome guys. Really appreciate you take, uh, inviting me. Thanks.